Hey guys, welcome back to the part 2 of making the corset top with peplum. I've already made the part 1, that is the pattern drafting and this is the sewing tutorials. So sit back and enjoy. Let's get started. So I'm going to be adding allowance to the cap. I'll be adding 0. Point five inches all round for all the three parts but then with the lower part i'm going to be extending the center part so what i'm doing here is to divide that line into two so you measure it whatever you get you divide it by two minus 4.5 so i'm marking 2.25 after that, I'll be going in by 0 0.25 inch, 0 0.25, and then I'll be connecting from that part to that part, and then from that part to that part as well. Make sure the center part is curved. So just like I'm doing, just place your French curve on it like this, and then draw in your curved lines. After this, I'll be adding seam allowance of 0 0.5 inches all round on all the three parts. So this is me marking the 0 0.5 all round. Note you are adding that 0 0.5 to the 0 0.25 you marked earlier. You are marking it all round. So we are doing this to all. And at this point, I am cutting out after adding the seam allowances. So after adding the seam allowances, this is how it looks like. This is what you should get after adding your seam allowance. At this point, I went ahead to cut out the body of the dress on my lining fashion fabric and then i added interfacing to it so at the sides i'm adding 0 0.75 seam allowance all around and at the cap side i'm adding 0 0.5 to it and then the shoulder and then for the sleeve i'm adding 0 0.5 to it now i went ahead to add interfacing to the main fabric of the blouse so after adding my interface and i'm going to be joining the seams together so make sure each seam is matching the other so this is me joining one part of the blouse and i'm joining the other part as well after joining the cap area i'm going to be doing or joining the back together as well. This is after fusing. I used medium interfacing to fuse it. This is a normal interface and not a corset lining. So you can see I've marked my 0 0.75 inches where I'll be stitching. So after stitching the center part, I'll be adding, I'll be joining the center front together as well. So at this point, I'm going to be fusing this onto the bra foam. I'm going to be folding the fashion fabric onto the bra foam. So you mark your wrong and then right side before you fuse it on. So this bra form actually looks like this. There's a form at the center and there's something covering both sides. It's called a bra form. It's a type of a bra form, but I don't know the particular name for it. So at this point, I'm adding my helmet to it and then I'll be placing my fashion fabric on it and then fuse it together. 
I've suffused in it. This is how it looks like. And then I've fused all three pieces. Now I'm going to be joining that side together. And after joining, I'm going to be cutting the excess off because I don't need it. Make sure you don't cut on the seam. So after cutting it off, I'm going to be joining that other part together. You can see I have labeled the part of the corset, which part is going to the center front, the side seam, and then the down and then upper part. Make sure you label all those parts so that you don't get confused. So after stitching the upper part together, I'm going ahead to trim off the excess. You can see there's a gap over there. Don't worry. I'll be trimming that excess off. It's from the seam allowance I added. So at this point, I'm trimming the excess off to prevent it from being bulky. That is the only reason why I am cutting it out. So after cutting it out, this is what I have. At this point, I've cut out this black satin, which is about 1.5 inches in width. And then I'm going to be stitching it at that part. So just fold it into two and then lay it on like this. And then sew all around. After sewing, you are going to be flipping it onto the other side like this and then stitch after stitching you'll be getting something like this the next thing i'm going to be doing is to cut out that excess fabric or the excess of the cap you are seeing over there make sure you are cutting it in line just a little bit and then this is how it looks like after cutting next thing i'm going to do is to fix the panels on the seams of the body so i'm going to be folding it into two like this stitch and then fold it on again like i did for the cup so i've stitched this part next thing i'm going to do is to flip it on like this and stitch you can see i've left about a quarter before placing that black fabric on it so at this point, I'm going to be joining the cap to it. So just make sure the center parts are meeting before you join any other part. It's always advisable to pin before stitching. So after pinning, I took it to the machine and then stitched. This is what I have. I'll be using the satin to cover this place up as well. So just lay it on it like this, like we did for the previous ones. After that, fold it on and stitch. So I advise you to cut this black satin on bias before you stitch it. This is straight, so I'm having some folds over there. So I advise you to cut it on bias before you stitch if you make it straight you are going to be getting those folds as well so i'm going to be joining this together by 0 0.5 inches that's the seam allowance i added I'm going to be doing for both front and then back sleeve after that next thing i'm going to do is to place it on top of the main fabric of the top and then I'll place the lining on top of it like this with right sides facing each other. So after pinning it, I'll take it to the machine and stitch. You can see I'm taking my time to do this. Take your time so that you get it right. After stitching that part, I'll be repeating the same process for the back. So just lay it on it like this, place the lining on, and then stitch that upper part. After stitching, next thing I'm going to be doing is to cut the fabric. I'm going to be cutting that point in. Make sure you're not cutting through the seam lines. This will enable you to turn the lining in with ease. 
so like i said it will help you turn in with ease you can see turning in has been easy that is the only reason why we cut that part or make notches at that part so at this point i'm going to be joining the shoulders together so i'll be placing the front down and then place the back on top of it like this after that i'll be opening the seams or opening that part up like this making sure fashion fabric is on fashion fabric and lining on lining and then i'll go ahead and then stitch after stitching this is what you are supposed to get so from here i'll be joining the sides together so i'm going to be turning to the lining part of the top and then mark my 0 0.75 inches that's the same allowance i added to the side i'll be marking it and then stitch so at this point i've stitched my 0 0.75 on both sides so this is how the top or blouse actually looks like after joining the sides together at this point you can decide to put you know insect bone at that part but i didn't insect bone into it you can actually do it or ignore it depending on what you want now for the peplum I went ahead to fold this fabric into two. You can see it unfold. And then I added five inches gap in between each panel or in between the cut lines I have made. You can extend it or make it more than five inches if you want. This is the back also this is cut into two the front is on fold then i added 0 0.75 seam allowance at the side seam and then in between i added five inches seam allowance for both front and then back so at this point i'll be joining both together so just open up the front like this you can see it's on fold you are, you are going to be placing the side seams on top of each other like this for both lining and then fashion fabric then you are going to stitch the sides after stitching the sides this is what i have and at this point i'm going to be placing my lining on top of it I'm going to be placing my lining on top of it and then join the lower part of the peplum. So just make sure the seams are meeting. Open up the seams and then make sure they are meeting. Pin them together and then you go ahead and then stitch. You can see I'm joining at the seams. So i went ahead to stitch you can see i started from that path through to the other side of the peplum so at this point i'm going to be cutting that part off and then make notches all around make sure you are cutting to and not through the seams make sure you are not cutting through the seams otherwise you have to stitch again after cutting or making the notches I'll go ahead and then turn it out after turning it out after turning it out you are going to be getting something like this so you can decide to stitch that part or leave it Next thing I'm going to be doing is to cut out a fabric of width 1.5 and then the length depend on you. So next thing I'm going to be doing is to fold both sides in like this 
and then fold it on again let me redo it for you to see fold one side in the other side in and then fold it on again and then stitch to the end after stitching you're going to be getting something like this i'm going to be cutting it out into three inches length each so this is three inches like i said I'm going to be making marks at the center back of the blouse. So from the upper part, I'm going to be marking one inch interval down, another one inch till I get to where I want it to end. So after marking, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to put is to put the cutout pieces on it so all you are going to do is to place it on like this at the right side of the blouse and then turn it like this pin it down place the other one beside it you can see i'm working on only the fashion fabric and not the lining and then turn it again like this till you get to the end or wherever you want it to end so after pinning i had four pieces on both sides so the interval is one inch and then make sure they are all together. There is no space in between. So at this point, I had four pieces and I'm going to be flipping or turning the lining on top of it like this and then stitch. So you are going to be turning the lining on top of it like this and then stitch. Let me redo it for you to see. So as it is like this, you're just going to turn it on like this. You can pin it down again and then stitch on the same allowance you added. So I went ahead to stitch and I'm turning out for you to see the outcome. So this is what I have on both sides of the blouse. yes so this is what i have next thing i'm going to do is to add the peplum to it so i've notched the center and i'm going to be joining the centers together i mean the center for the blouse and then the center of the peplum together and then pin it down after pinning it down I'll go ahead and then stitch my 0 0.5 inches seam allowance all round after stitching, you're going to be getting something like this. And the blouse is almost done. Next thing I'm going to be doing is to pipe. Is to pipe the armhole area. So I'm going to be using a bias tape for that. So if you have any bias tape, you can use it or you can make one for yourself. Then use it to finish the raw edges of the armhole so i went ahead to finish the raw edges then this is what i have next thing i'm going to be doing is to lace it for you to see the outcome so the width of the lace is actually the same as what we used for the corset back it's 1.5 inches in width and then the length depend on what or how long you want it to be yes so after lacing this is what i have this is the finished work don't forget to like comment 
and share my videos don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get notified whenever i post a new video thanks for watching bye